You are now listening to Limited Trust, a Devastator podcast. Let's get into it. This is episode three of the Limited Trust Devastator podcast. I'm still having trouble saying Limited Trust, a Devastator podcast, because it just seems, just doesn't seem like the way you should be saying it. Anyway, I figured today um, we'll get into more about me and just tell you who I am, where I'm from, uh, and some things that led me up to this point as of, you know, now. So my name is Kyle. Uh, I grew up in Rochester, New York, uh, off of Otis Street, uh, which is on the west side, Otis, Lyle, Murray. I, I lived on Carn Street, actually, which is right off Otis. The next street over to the west would be Murray. The uh, street to the east would be uh, what would that? The closest street to the east would be Myrtle. Um, I was born in '86. Yep, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> I was a good student, probably up until third grade, when I switched from 57 school to 30 school, which was like the next street over from me. And 30 school was that was. That shit was crazy. And you'd think, yeah, third grade. I mean, how crazy could be it? Dude, that, that shit was crazy. So I went to 30 school, and I had my first uh, encounter, I'd say, with doing the wrong thing there at, in fourth grade in Mr. Delario's class. Uh, I don't know what I thought we were going to do, but I put a bunch of ski masks and firecrackers and a slingshot and all this shit in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> typical typical you know <laughs> uh but it, it kind of wasn't the same then but it kind of was because they end up calling the police uh when somebody snitched on me because i showed him this kid named doug of course snitched on me because i showed him all the shit in my bag and what i thought i was gonna do is i thought we were gonna do like a school takeover i didn't want to hurt anybody but i thought we were gonna like take over the school and live there and uh and that's and that's not what happened next thing you know they're asking me to uh to go home for the rest of the year and um start again you know next year so I started back in the fifth grade in Miss Daniel's class, and she was fucking insane. Um, she would f- fucking scream at people. She would, f- I remember she would, if you were messing with something in your desk, this is back before they had like the see through desk, she would just come up and dump your desk out all over the floor, just scream in your face. She was like a really intimidating woman. And I remember she used to say, I am straight out the insane asylum. And and to being a little kid, that that was frightening. So I remember telling my mother about this at one point and I was like, Ma, you know, she's she's crazy. She's doing this, she's yelling, she screams at people, she fucking throws shit all over. And uh my mom said, Well, if okay. She's thinking, yeah, sure, sure she is. She said, So record it. So I said, All right, record it. So I had one of those those small flat tape decks, you know, with the single tape. It didn't do anything but record and do playback and stuff. So I took that and I stuffed a little tape in there, put a little balled up toilet paper in the little slot so it would record. See, half the people listening to this, they don't have any fucking idea what I'm talking about. But then the other half is like, yeah, yeah, boy. So I stuffed up the, the uh, little paper in the fucking thing so I could record. And I got it, man. I got her going nuts. And when I came home the next day, my I played it or that day, I played it for my mother, and and she was you know she kind of looked like huh, well I guess you weren't bullshitting. So uh, the whole thing happened with the school, and and of course they told Mrs. Daniels exactly who it was that uh, that did this, that said all these things, and um, we left for my birthday uh, to go to my grandparents' house in a thousand islands and uh i spent the weekend there like doing non-city stuff and uh shooting bb guns and stuff and i i had a butter knife in my backpack that we used to unjam this this one bb gun that we had it was a piece of shit and uh and of course we used my backpack to put all this stuff in 
And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you brought the BB gun to school. Nah, I didn't. Made sure we got all that stuff out. But what I neglected to take out uh, was the butter knife. A butter knife, a, a standard butter knife. And uh, I, when I went back to school Monday, I was, I think I had music class or something like that. And I went to uh, come back and I got like intercepted by Miss Sianka, the principal. And she's like, grab your backpack and we need to come down to the office. And I was thinking like, uh oh, something's wrong. You know, something's the matter. I hope everything's okay at home. And when I got down to the office, she said, now, sat me down at their little conference table. She said, all right, uh, if you would just empty out that backpack for me. And I'm like, hmm, well, this is weird. So I start reaching in and pulling out, you know, all my little class odds and ends. And I remember reaching my hand in this bag and I froze because I knew exactly what this was as soon as I grabbed it. And I pulled out this butter knife. Man, she acted like I pulled out a fucking, like I pulled out a fully loaded pistol. Bam, cops are there again. <laughs> and this time, this time they said, Kyle can't, Kyle can't come back to the school ever. So I, I had to leave. I had to get a tutor for a little while until a friend of my mom's got me in at uh, 35 school over on Field Street. And uh, I started going there. And that was actually an all right school. Uh, so I finished out fifth grade there. And that, it, was, it only went, I think it went to sixth grade, but you had to get selected. So from there, I went to Nathaniel, uh, which is interim or I think number four. There's like a bunch of names for it. And that place was a fucking nut house, man. Like, I know everyone thinks, oh, the city, what high school did you go to? Oh, this high school was about it, that high school. Well, what I kind of came to learn later on, especially, is high school, yeah, they had their people who handled their business or whatever, but high school was full of a bunch of people who either wanted to be there or had to be there. Um, the people who didn't want to be there, the, the people who were trouble were already done. They dropped out immediately, you know, cause in middle school, if you don't go to school, they hassle your parents, they'll try to bring your mom to jail, whatever. But in, uh, so anyway, so this middle school was fucking off the chain. And, uh, I, I remember walking in there thinking this is going to be tough, man. And it was tough. So uh, that's where I met Twan, Dubs, Antoine, <laughs> and uh, and I just saw him last month. You know, we're still friends all these years later. Um, anyway, so I passed sixth grade barely, seventh grade, total washout, man. Like totally failed that. Went again second grade or second grade, seventh grade for the second time totally botched that again I just didn't care man it was it was crazy I was having a real hard time there man it was uh I was getting suspended it was like suspension five days all the time five days five days five days I was suspended for five days like constantly and and I wasn't good and I didn't care so on uh what would have been the third and everyone else is moving up all my friends except for me so on the third uh which would have been the third year of seventh grade um I, I looked at my ma the day before we were supposed to go back to school and I said I said do I really have to go and she said I, are you gonna try and at that point I was back so far I didn't care I gave up on school I mean as a whole I was just like all right let's just get on to the next step and I said no nah. so she said all right well we'll figure something out so after about a month of not going um you know, the authorities or whoever it was got in touch with my mom. I was like, look, you can't do this, you know. Uh, so then I ended up getting a tutor at a, at the library. They'd meet me there. And um, they found a school that was across the street from the library that I had to go to. Um, that was the only school that would allow me to go uh, after all my disciplinary history and then not going for a month um, there was some issue with me re-enrolling in the city school district. So I went to the school called Hope Hall, which is an alternative school. And, um, dude, they were great. They were, I can't say enough good things about them. And they, maybe not in, at the time, they had never really had somebody like me in there, um, who was pretty honest 
straightforward. You know, kids like to bullshit. I was always honest and straightforward, and um, and they let me get away with a lot. And the first thing I did when I walked in, I told them how old I was. You know, at, at my meeting, and what grade I was supposed to be going into. And they're like, "Oh no, uh, how about we start you in eighth grade?" So I was like, Shit, "All right, sounds good to me." So I finished uh, eighth grade there, and uh, which was like I had a, a couple months left. By the time it was all said and done, I went there for like three or four months. It was it was a great place. Uh, then I got the news that we were going to be moving from the city. Uh, and I was like, oh, all right. It wasn't a big surprise because um, they'd been looking for houses, my ma and Steve. And um, when they found one, and it was 55 minutes west in a town called Medina, which was pretty much the exact opposite in a lot of ways to where I grew up, where I lived my whole life, where I saw everything that I saw. Um, and that was a big culture shock because the next few days, you know, the next few weeks, it seems like days we were out. And um, now I'm in the middle of the summer in this place that I don't know anybody. I've never been and I'm by myself. And we live like in the, I would call it the country where people around here would say you live in the country or you live in the town I lived in the country so there was nobody around and it was like super isolated and I just hated it I, I just I didn't even know how to function and at that point I had already started smoking weed and drinking a little little beers here and there and shit and uh I ended up going to the the local high school I started then uh, in, that, in that following school year, oh boy, did I have a chip on my shoulder. Uh, <laughs> I was the new kid from the city and, um, and I was not having a good time there either. So I was just mad to begin with. And, I, and I'm looking around and I felt out of place because there was all these white kids. Like I'm in a class with all white kids and I've just, I've never experienced that before ever not even close I mean at the most maybe there would be one or two other white kids so I know it sounds like counterintuitive to a lot of people listening of but it's what it did it felt foreign it felt not right I felt like the outsider I'm like what is going on here and it's not totally insane and the teachers do care and you do have to pay attention and there are consequences to all this stuff, which is crazy to me. Um, so on the third week there, uh, I was in, I ended up getting five days of ISS on my birthday and I remember them bringing me down <laughs> and uh, telling me, you know, you get suspension for five days and I'm like, yes. I'm suspended on my birthday on the 25th. I was like, that's cool. I'll get about the whole week off of my birthday. And they're like, no, it's ISS. I'm like, ISS? The fuck is that? Yeah, uh-huh. Found out what that was real quick. Uh, In-school suspension was a total pain in the ass. And I had to sit there with a bunch of people similar to me. But I always thought like, yeah, you guys ain't shit. Uh, I'm I'm the real truth, homie. You know, uh, and I. But some of the people there were all right. And uh, when I was sitting down with the principal, he's like looking over and he's like, "Oh, oh, big city kid, huh? Big city kid from Lockport." I was like, "What?" I said, "I'm from Lockport. Are you fucking serious?" I said, "I'm from Rochester." And he goes, "Oh, even better, even better." Blah blah blah. So I got off ISS. I went back to school and I just immediately, the first thing I did the same shit again, bam, same thing. And now they brought my mom in again, another meeting. And he said, look, we can't have this kid here. He's definitely, he's got some behavioral issues, whatever. I, I don't, we don't really know what's wrong with your son, but he's got some kind of violence issues, whatever. And, and I was totally miserable. So I had to leave there and I found another private school, uh, and which was a, an amazing school there was like 32 kids in the entire school and I went there and um I did like summer school one year and just to to skip a grade and I I, I did so much extra stuff while I was at this school that I ended up graduating on time when I was supposed to after failing and and really dropping the ball all those years. So they really helped me out at this Christian school. And I, I learned a lot about 
religion and Christianity and stuff, which was, it was different, but I definitely didn't have as a heart of a nose going in there as I did, um, at the other public school. And, um, but at this time I'm like getting into drugs and I smoke a lot of weed. I'm drinking, I'm going different places. Uh, and I always went back to the city. I've always went back to the city, even until now. Like I always go back. I work in the city. My family's in the city, my job, my friends, everybody's all in the city. So I've been constantly traveling back and forth. And, um, so I, uh, I met some, I don't want to say new friends, but I don't know. I, I met a new friend and we'll talk about this friend, um, and he ended up dying and it, it really broke my heart and it was uh it was uh it was at that point in my life probably the worst thing that ever happened to me and this was in uh my junior year and and he was a he lived in Brockport and I met him through another friend of mine from the city and uh he died and I had never experienced that before and this was in 2003 and it really broke my heart and uh we used to do stupid things together <laughs> and fun stuff and he was older than me and we would do all kinds of cool shit so um he died and it kind of like my whole life just fell apart all at once and uh the following week at uh, a remembrance party for him is when I got my case, when I, when I got all my felonies and, uh, because people were, weren't acting the way I thought they should be at my, my best friend in the whole world's, uh, little thing that he's, that, that they put together and these people weren't acting right. And, uh, it turned out bad for everybody. Um, so after that, uh, I had done, I had done drugs at that point. At, at that point I was 16. I did, I did heroin a few times. I, I smoked it once. I snorted it twice. I drank some beers. I ate mushrooms one time and fucking flipped out. I, I totally didn't have a good time there. And, uh, but after, after he died, I, I went massively downhill and I just drank and drank and I was a, I was young. And then I got the felonies and I got, uh, I ended up with five years, uh, intensive supervision, probation, restitution, rehab. And, uh, so I had to stop smoking weed, which just, it was worse because I figured out what they tested for in, in rehab and at probation by just asking, um, I say, oh yeah, my dad wants to see, you know, he lives back in Rochester. He wants to, he doesn't believe that I'm not doing drugs and stuff. I was like, do you guys got a printout to show him that I'm, you know, I'm trying and doing better. And that was total bullshit. And they handed me a printout of everything they tested for. So I went down to listen. I'm like, oh, well, they don't, they don't test for this. They don't test for this. So we're going to become a fucking pill head. And that's, that's what I did. And I started smoking cigarettes at, at rehab which was a fucking, that was nice. <laughs> well, thanks. And, um, so I, I, I really went down and I, and I never did, uh, I never did heroin again. Just so you guys know, after those three times, uh, because that was, yeah. Um, anyway, so massive alcoholic now I mean my massive alcoholic I would have no problem sitting down as a teenager drinking an 18 pack and still functioning school this and that but I was ruining relationships and all kinds of shit but I ended up graduating from high school um my graduating class was two and the other person was a person who just participated in a homeschooling program for extracurriculars on like Fridays and shit. So out of my actual school, I was the only person that graduated that year because it was such a small unit. Um, and, uh, then I started working at my uncle's pizzeria, which is pretty cool back in the city. Uh, that's where I met like Jimmy the ghost and then Twan was working there and it was just like a party. That was a good time, man. And, uh, and I started working at a factory and I'm working part time with my dad. So working was a big part of it. But through all of this, I was just a, I was a drunk man and I, and I had a pill problem. Um, at some point I thought, um, this, this can't last, you know, this isn't going to be a good thing. I got to figure out something 
because I'm like killing myself here. And uh, I, I was drinking in Greece one night and I was so drunk when I went into this, I think it was Tops um, on uh, Ridge Road. And I, I tried to buy a four pack of Tilt and, and they were like not about to sell it to me. And I was like, come on, man, don't, don't play with me, man. I walked all the way up here. And they're like, oh, if you leave, if you leave the store, we will sell it to you. If you just leave out of the parking lot and everything, I'm like, word. So, so I bought this four pack of Tilt and I left and I was all fucked up, man. And then I, I thought it would be a good idea to try and kill myself because I was just so disappointed with myself. And, and even prior to this, I was with my cousin and and she was like, I could tell she was getting sick of me because we were walking around the mall and I was drinking Sparks in the middle of the mall and I had one in my pocket. I just thought I was the fucking man. And I used to carry on this big knot of money I had at one point and I would carry it around all the time. I'm surprised nothing bad happened. I had like 10,000 in small bills that I would just walk around with. And uh, and I would fucking walk into places and just buy shit, dumb ass shit because I thought I was cool, but I fucking wasn't. I was a total cheese dick and um so whatever so i i thought i was gonna kill myself and i was walking in the road trying to walk out in front of cars obviously i didn't try hard enough and uh all of a sudden i was like in my drunken stupor i said this is fucking this is ridiculous man i threw the tilt down and uh that was march 14th i think 2008 and i never drank again after that not once. Um, that was 14 years ago, which would be it would be 15 years uh, in uh, 2023, I think. Yeah. Um, but then I I just uh, was a was a pill head after that, unfortunately, and um, so I continued on with that. I got off of uh, I got off of probation. They wouldn't let me off on early release due to the severity of the crime. Is what the Whoever was in charge wrote on the paperwork, but uh, probation was different. That was a, an experience all in itself. And I'll tell. I will do an episode to talk about felony probation. <laughs> um, eh, I I took pills for a while, then I stopped. I didn't really quit. I just kind of stopped because I like ran out one day and couldn't find any more, and I just didn't feel like I had to do that anymore. So then I was just smoking weed. And then uh, I had like a fucking psychotic episode one day, relapsed, um, and and I well, it wasn't really a relapse. I don't want to even call it a relapse because I never quit. I just kind of stopped. And there's a big difference with me when it comes to quitting and just stopping. Um, and I was all fucked up for like the first month of my first son of his life. I was all fucked up and uh, I don't really remember lots of it. And uh, I was also trying to get on these antidepressants, which fucked everything up, too. So I tried to, I, I was, okay, all right, I will right, we'll figure this out. Um, I stopped doing that. And then shortly after that, I stopped smoking weed in the, the January. My son was born late September, and I stopped smoking. I stopped doing drugs in October, I think, right around there. And I stopped while well, doing pills. And then in the January... I stopped smoking weed and, um, and that, so this will be, uh, in January, this will be 11 years clean. And, um, yeah, that, that pretty much is where all the bad stuff stops. Then I just started working hard and just working a lot. And I made music my whole life. We started making music in uh, 2001. We would just record and record. I got hundreds of songs. And we just tried to craft to make it better, and and through my whole alcoholism and all that, I I fucked up a bunch of shit. Like I I met this dude named Bosco, and he was like, "Yo, you are the fucking truth, man." He was like, "He's like, I want you to be my Paul Wall." He's like, "You be the white boy." Da 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 da. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, whatever." And he's like, "Nah, come down to Linden Oak Studio." He's like, "I got Green Lantern in there, this and that." And I was like, "Yeah, who is this dude, Green Lantern? Are you kidding me?" He's like, come through. And I, so I blew this dude off. And then I'm watching the Transformers movie. And fucking someone gets a hold of me. And he's like, yo. He's like, you know that song you gave me by that dude? I was like, yeah. He's like, 
that shit is in the Transformers movie. I was like, you're lying. Nah, he wasn't lying. I was supposed to be on that joint. Pimpin' hard. Anyway, so I fucked that up. And then I did a talent showcase at some point, and uh, this dude from AJM Records came up to me. Out of all these people that were there, and he's like, come to my office. And I think it was in New Jersey or New York City. Uh, I think his name was Darren Johnson. And uh, I was like, I'm fucking going there. And I never went there either. Fuck that up. But uh, I made music. And uh, oh shit, we're at 25 minute mark. I'm sorry. Well, how about we do part two? And I'll tell you more about me, music. And then uh, maybe we'll get in. uh, We'll start off the next one of music and how that stopped and how Devastator started. Um, Well, thanks for listening this far. And I appreciate everyone who's been listening. And uh, shout out to all you guys, man. Everyone sharing it and uh, and let me know what you think. And all right, that's it. Till the next time. Later. <laughs>